it's a, a real uh, pleasure to be with you all. I now consider you my adopted neutropenia family. Uh, as of yesterday, I had never met anyone with neutropenia, so it's a real, it's a real pleasure to be with uh, you all. So as Dr. Dale said, I'm going to speak with you a little bit about not alternative therapies, but integrative therapies. Um, I really feel that um, it's important to make that transition from complementary to alternative to integrative. Um, therapies for better living with neutropenia. I'm actually here to speak with you um, as, a, as a patient, as one of you, and not necessarily so much as a provider, um, but things that I have learned to um, work with uh, with regards to having neutropenia. And so some of the topics that I'm going to cover today are uh, neutropenia and acupuncture. I am a board certified acupuncturist. and. Um, actually started acupuncture training um, the year I was diagnosed with neutropenia. Um, prior to that, I was a creative director, one of the founding executive team members for MSNBC and founding um, WebMD um, and several other uh, internet projects. So as Dr. Dale said, I have an appreciation for um, innovation and information. Um, so. I'm also going to share with you some uh, personal approaches and uh, bigger picture approaches to uh, neutropenia uh, and nutrition and managing um, bone pain through an anti-inflammatory diet. I've studied extensively with Dr. Andrew Weil, uh, who is a Harvard-trained physician who is really looking at the role of uh, integrative medicine and inflammatory uh, role in uh, nutrition. And I'm going to touch on uh, aromatherapy uh, and how it can uh, help with reducing stress, anxiety, and sleep, and mind-body wellness, and uh, mind-body wellness, and resources for you and your family. So I want to thank, um, from my heart, Dr. Dale, Adriana Bolliard, um, Sinar, who I like to call <laughs> in Seattle, Lee, uh, Amgen, and the physicians working to address neutropenia and helping patients. And I know we all thank you. So thank you for um, all of your dedication um, to helping us with neutropenia. So uh, as I mentioned, I'm a board certified acupuncturist. Um, working with acupuncture and nutrition. Um, I have actually uh, studied yoga for 20 to 30 years, and I, int I uh, integrate that in my patient education and wellness care. And um, I'll just add to that that it was in working on this presentation, I mean, obviously this is the first time I've ever spoken uh, as a neutropenic, <laughs> um, as a patient, actually. Um, and that I realize I've spent the past 20 years of my life finding things that work for me as a patient, um, finding wellness and balance in my life. And so it has been through things, through uh, the practice and study of mindfulness and meditation and yoga, um, and then also the use of acupuncture for 20 years that I have found has really helped me feel better. So I want to share with you, and I welcome questions afterwards, of how you can find your own wellness and your own balance in your life um, with living with neutropenia. Because I was living with neutropenia before I knew I was diagnosed with neutropenia and lived with chronic infections just like you probably have. So um, as I mentioned, I was diagnosed with severe chronic neutropenia in 2010 by Dr. Dale. And um, it's easy to sort of sum up your life in one sentence, but the reality is, is that um, I often went through um, months and months and months with open wounds and chronic infections. And um, just like many of you have, I, I would understand. Um, and I had to find those ways. I had to find ways to easily get back on track, if you will, or find ways to um, feel better faster, if you will. So I do inject Neupogen every day, and I've come to learn how to manage bone pain and the side effects using various techniques, as I've just mentioned. And integrative medicine is both allopathic Western medicine and Eastern medicine uh, concepts working together to help patients feel better. So let's start uh, with the neutropenia mind-focused sort of awareness, body awareness. And um, before we do that, I just wanted to say that, you know, for us in terms of how we talk about integrative um, therapies, we have to remember that in other countries, um, in Asia, that acupuncture has been used uh, for thousands, 2,000 years in treating all sorts of, of pain and pain-associated um, syndromes. So, 
just um, uh, taking a moment here to uh, come into this present moment. I know we've been taking in a lot of um, information, and uh, even in just the past uh, 20 hours here, we've, we're learning so much. But this is an opportunity just to tune into your body. So if you'll take a moment um, to just close your eyes, I'd like to start with um, a relaxing breath technique that Dr. Andrew Weil, a uh, physician who has um, taught me this relaxing breath and I like to use with patients and I certainly do it myself several times a day just to sort of tune in and, and tune inward. So this can be done in any position. Of course it helps if you can just sit with your back straight um, and just relax into your chair and then I'll just explain it and then we can all enjoy it uh, together. So. Um, as you're sitting with your eyes closed, just you can start to uh, soften um, your mouth and just start to inhale through your nose. And you just want to count uh, to four. And then we are going to actually hold our breath for seven, which seems like a long time, but it won't, uh, won't seem too long in time. And then exhale uh, on the count of eight. So once again, inhaling um, to the count of four, you're holding your breath for seven, and then you're exhaling for eight. So let's just enjoy that uh, for a moment, just taking a moment to actually disengage from the room, and slowly just, if you can, bring your tongue to the tip of your roof of your mouth, or just let your mouth be open. And then just inhaling to the count of four, And then holding your breath for seven, and then exhaling just to the count of eight, slowly. So I see some people have their eyes open, and that's just fine, too. Um, as you continue to inhale, and just think about that four, seven, eight ratio, I want to invite you to just drop down into feeling what you're feeling sitting in your chair, the sense of being present, And then if you notice any tension in the back of your neck, your low back, any bone pain, um, tension from flying on an airplane here, you can just soften into that and let that relax. And just notice how you can bring your mind to an area of your body where there's any stored tension and start to relax and soften that tension. And just notice that when you shift your mind, also what can happen. And I think that's something that's very important with any individual, any human, any patient, any physician, is that we can really know the um, importance of how we direct our mind um, in sickness and in health. And so when you've explored that, just taking a moment um, to become uh, aware of your body again, your room, the room around you, um, just taking a moment now with your eyes closed to just see if you can move into a place of now gratitude and gratitude for being here, gratitude for all the work that's gone into this conference and gratitude for all the neutrophils in your body that are working very well for you, ones that you have. And then if it feels appropriate, just extending that gratitude to those around you. So noticing how you can become empathetic and compassionate uh, no matter what state that you are. So just sensing that sense of compassion and gratitude and how different you might feel from when you move into that space. And when you're ready, just opening your eyes, coming back into the room, maybe looking left and right and just kind of connecting with the person next to you. So moving forward out of that, um, hopefully I see some folks touching each other over there, putting hands on each other's heart or reaching out, and that's just nice to see when you, when you actually take time to stop and disengage from a process and re-engage with connectivity, your breath, your body, um, the shift there. So now I'm gonna uh, focus more so on talking about um, acupuncture and acupuncture training. So uh, within my own context, I emphasize the need to uh, educate and offer patients the integrative care and treatment for many difficult issues without adding additional uh, drugs or narcotics. And I think that's one of the most amazing things about acupuncture that can help with pain is that it doesn't obviously require any additional drugs or narcotics and it's something that can be used very easily. 
So uh, as you're thinking about uh, potentially working with acupuncture, um, an acupuncture should be NACOM board certified and hopefully have a master's level of acupuncture and training. And as I've mentioned, I work with also um, Dr. Andrew Weil and um, studied for over 20 years with Shiva Ray, one of the world's um, kind of more respective uh, yoga teachers and have really come to enjoy utilizing both of these practices together, um, both integrative nutrition and yoga. Uh, not only as a provider, but personally, as I said. So uh, what is acupuncture? How many uh, individuals in the room have actually experienced acupuncture? So a good, a good number of folks. Good. Excellent. Um, so acupuncture uses uh, fine filament needles that upon insertion communicate with the CNS and to help speed up the natural healing process. And this is either done by releasing certain neurotransmitters or blocking them. And an immediate benefit of acupuncture is pain relief due to the release of endorphins. And so some of the folks who've experienced acupuncture might be able to tell, tell you that right away, that one of the things you have immediately is pain relief and a deep sense of relaxation. So locally, acupuncture can break up adhesions, it can alleviate trigger points, and mechanically force contracted muscles to relax, and, treating, and also treating muscle spasms and spasticity. So one of the things that when we're in pain that the body does is, of course, is contract. Muscles can contract even further and become tense. And so, of course, that's where that breathing technique can, can help you, is to try to soften and not focus on your pain, but try to relax actually more so. But acupuncture can be very helpful in treating some of the tension that, or orthopedic pain, I would call it, around that. So uh, because of these benefits, it can treat a wide variety of symptoms, including bone pain, as I've mentioned, nausea, fatigue, headaches, as well as uh, various digestive and urinary uh, concerns. So uh, within an acupuncture treatment, you should know, as you're considering it, that it's 95% painless, it's extremely safe, it's natural, no side effects, and most symptoms are treated within four to 12 treatments. A lot of people ask me, well, how long will it take to work with this consideration or this symptom? And I, usually I see very uh, uh, positive results within four to 12 treatments. For bone pain, um, I have to say I do treat myself daily or every other day with acupuncture before I go to bed. I'm fortunate to do that. Um, but I find within 10 to 20 minutes that my bone pain um, from side effects of Nupigen has changed considerably. And that's a great resource to have. I'm also going to share with you about ear seeds here shortly, um, another tool you can use um, at home. So uh, acupuncture is NIH and JAMA suggested treated for all types of pain and nausea and it's covered by um, insurance. And as I just mentioned about ear seeds, um, auricular acupuncture or ear acupuncture is similar to body acupuncture. It's a method of treating a variety of uh, physiological and psychological health concerns by the stimulation of certain acupuncture points only on the external ear. So ear seeds can be placed to stimulate in points between, or to stimulate points between treatments and to help manage chronic symptoms. So as um, I mentioned, ear acupuncture can help between acupuncture treatments, and um, it's something that you as a family can learn how to do, either place yourself or have a provider first show you and then follow up. And I will be um, at 3.30 uh, giving people free uh, air seed uh, treatments, if you would like, and explaining more so about this. But um, we're starting to see more of this use now um, through the media fascination with people like Gwyneth Paltrow and Penelope Cruz um, kind of proudly wearing their ear seeds um, and giving uh, Chinese medicine and Asian medicine a little bit more of a understanding. So acupuncture is safe and effective. Since March uh, 96, the Food and Drug Administration has uh, designated acupuncture needles as class two medical devices. And the needles are as fine as a human hair and do not hurt when inserted. Of course, that's the first question I get from everybody is, does acupuncture hurt? And I would say, no, it doesn't hurt. Um, the key is finding someone who is a gentle practitioner. So I tend to practice more of a Japanese method of acupuncture, which is much more gentle than some other approaches. So if you're looking for an acupuncturist, I would just ask them, you know, do you use a gentle approach? I don't prescribe to the no pain, no gain acupuncture school because that's not, not effective for anyone. 
Um, so a little bit um, uh, very briefly uh, about some research uh, with regards to being safe and effective. So researchers followed 15,000 adults who suffered from either migraine or tension type headaches that occurred twice per month for a year. And after the six months, the acupuncture group reported a significant reduction in headache frequency and pain. And of course, the group that did not receive acupuncture reported that their headache frequency remained constant. So again, I'm speaking to you more so today as a patient and as a neutropenic patient and how this can work for you, not going so much into the research, but I'm happy to provide additional uh, information for you. So you might be wondering, how does acupuncture work? And there are several theories on how it works. Um, and I've touched on five here. So the first is an autonomic nervous system theory where acupuncture stimulates the release of norepinephrine, acetylcholine, and several types of opioids, affecting the changes in their turnover rate and normalizing the autonomic nervous system and reducing pain. And then vascular and interstitial. Yeah, that. yeah. You know, I, I don't think I could answer that question. I think that would be a good question for a physician. I think, um, uh, you know, we're talking about generalized ways that acupuncture works right now. So you're talking about a very specific diagnosis. And I'm actually, I want to just, your, your question's great though, and that I want to really clarify that what acupuncture treats is the side effects and symptoms, we do not treat the disease. So I am in no way saying that acupuncture cures neutropenia or any other uh, uh, disease, that it treats the side effects. So um, I, pre I wish I could answer that more specifically, but I think that would be good to discuss that with your physician. So the vascular interstitial theory in acupuncture manipulates the electrical system of the body by creating or enhancing closed circuit transport in the tissues. And this facilitates healing by allowing the transfer of materials and electrical energy between normal and injured tissues. And so often people say, yeah, but what really is acupuncture? And I say, just like the walls around us, there's electricity running through all the walls, right? And uh, electrical panels that our body and acupuncture point specifically is truly electrical potential. So we can look at that from a very sort of scientific perspective that we know there is electrical potential between the cells. So moving on then to blood chemistry theory. So acupuncture affects blood concentrations of triglycerides, cholesterol, and phospholipids, suggesting that acupuncture can facilitate the regulation of blood chemistry to return the body towards homeostasis. And if any, of un, if any of you really know me, I love the word homeostasis because it means balance. And I often uh, think that this theory is one of the ones that really applies to maybe why I feel better after acupuncture um, and have immediate response. And I also just want to speak very briefly on homeostasis. And uh, as a neutropenic, I think one of the things that we have to do is really retrain ourselves to find um, what does our own homeostasis look like? So what does our own balance feel like and look like to each of us? Um, and so when you think about that, when you're well or if you feel better, what does it mean to come back to that homeostasis point? Another. Uh, Ex explanation for how acupuncture works and is successful is the gate control theory. So ac acupuncture activates non-nociceptive receptors that inhibit the transmission of nociceptive signals in the dorsal horn and then gating out painful stimuli. Neurotransmitter theory, acupuncture affects the higher brain areas stimulating the secretion of beta endorphins and encephalins in the brain and the spinal cord, and therefore the release of these specific neurotransmitters influence the immune system and antinociceptive system. So these five areas are just some possible explanations of how acupuncture works. This slide I like to refer to as more of an orthopedic uh, understanding of how acupuncture can work. And like, with regards to neutropenia and uh, the consideration of possible bone pain after Neupogen, um, is that, as I've just said, that our muscles can become tight and contracted. And of course, when we, our muscles are tight and contracted and we're in pain, we think the last thing that we want to do is exercise. But one of the best things that we can do is gentle exercise and really motivate ourselves to engage in movement. And so that may mean gentle yoga, that may mean Tai Chi, that may mean walking five miles a day or even one mile a day. 
But what I love in this slide right here is that by introducing the acupuncture needle right into the connective tissue is that I'm, the needle is actually helping unwind the muscle tissue in very simple pedestrian kind of terms and release that orthopedic pain that might be there. So um, again, thinking about gentle movement um, in continuum with potential of something like acupuncture uh, and yoga to help reduce pain. So neutropenia symptoms, we all know very well. Um, what they are, but just to recap here, so as I've just said, bone pain and Neupogen injections are, are fairly common. Um, Shay worked with us last night on the potential emotional disturbances and stress, depression, mood swings, really knowing yourself well of how you may feel low at a certain period, but then also understanding how you also may feel well and taking note of how that feels. Um, of course, pain, some of us have neuropathy. I actually often get neuropathic pain in my fingertips and my toes after Neupogen. Um, and chronic sinus infections and fatigue. So uh, acupuncture and neutropenia, uh, as I've said, can treat not only the bone pain, but can also treat um, digestive pain problems, urinary uh, problems. I'm not saying it treats urinary infections, and that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying go to your physician, be treated for a bladder infection or a urinary infection, but then ac regular once a week acupuncture could help regulate those functions. Um, and as I've mentioned, uh, depression and emotional disorders, headaches and migraines. Um, how many people here get a mild to moderate headache from taking Neupogen or injecting Neupogen? And so acupuncture and ear seeds can be excellent for helping you work with uh, monitoring or reducing those headaches. So uh, as I've said, reducing the acute symptoms can help manage chronic long-term issues to better help you find wellness and balance. And effective symptom management includes medication number one and wellness strategies, emotional support, emotional support and good coordination of care. And uh, this sounds simple, but in our daily life, it's absolutely critical that we have support structures and networks within our life that we've created, we've actively created. And I love how Dr. Dale and Adriana and others have talked about having a diary. And what I like to talk to patients about, and myself as well, by my bedside, is to have a wellness diary. So not a sickness diary, but a wellness diary in which you can um, notate what you're doing or the changes that you're making. Um, within uh, different resources, as I've mentioned, uh, yoga, acupuncture, or things that you might even want to try. And I think that emotional piece is very important as well. Um, a large percentage of patients with neutropenia uh, experience many types of pain, neuropath neuropathic, bone pain, headaches, like we've talked about. Um, and again, I'm speaking to you as a patient right now. I'm not um, speaking to you as a provider. I uh, was fortunate to meet Dr. Lindenberger through Dr. Dale, who's a hematologist that I see, um, and uh, he does my annual bone marrows and biopsies, I should say. And it was suggested to me last year that I try loratadine, 10 milligrams, um, at night when I ha inject Neupogen. And I have found that to be very, very helpful in reducing um, bone pain um, along with acupuncture and some of the other things that I've talked to you about. If you don't mind, I'd like to just to find out from um, everybody, how many other people are using an antihistamine or loratadine? So a good number, and I believe this was talked about, although I wasn't here last year, uh, perhaps a bit um, as well. Was that a question? You know, I'm going to defer to Dr. Dale on that. I personally was told Dr. Loratadine specifically 10 milligrams, but I'll let Dr. Dale address that. Well, I'll comment. Yeah, yes, the family of antihistamines have been tried, and actually there's a trial that's not yet reported, but it shows in a study that it works. It's not a complete preventative, but it does help. Yeah. Pain associated with 
Is the Benadryl what's in like Tylenol PM and most of the PM type medicines? Is that the same type of powder here? And yeah. people vary a lot in the sedating effects. Uh, but anyway, it's an idea yeah. that you can uh, we can discuss further, and um, I'll just move forward, and then at the end, if anyone would like to ask questions, that's great. But I just, on that note, I do use more loratadine rather than I found Benadryl to be very sedating, and um, I can wake up the next morning and go to work and be with patients and not have that kind of Benadryl hangover. So I really do um, speak highly of the loratadine, and it's a good solution with the ear seeds and the acupuncture and most importantly, the Nupagen. <laughs> so um, as I've mentioned, it can be great in, in helping to assist with uh, the side effects of an infection, um, helping regulate bladder and bowel dysfunction. Some people talk about um, issues of either diarrhea or constipation, um, and acupuncture can help regulate uh, these functions, bodily functions, with weekly treatments or with the ear seeds. Um, a lot of individuals ask, you know, oh, is acupuncture covered by insurance? And yes, it is. Um, you'll find that most patients have between, or, or most of us, I should say, have between 12 and 24 treatments a year available through your insurance. Um, and additionally, uh, you know, massage and acupuncture together may be very helpful for uh, regular treatment of, of bone pain and making you feel better and feel well. Um, so I encourage you to check your uh, insurance benefits and just see what you may have. And I personally would be very happy to help you find a board certified and trained acupuncturist who would be gentle <laughs> and helpful to you. So let me know how I can be helpful. Um, so possible integrative medicine uh, interventions for neutropenia uh, are, of course, nutrition, considering an anti-inflammatory diet, low in saturated fat and enriched in polyunsaturated fatty acids, no or low gluten and dairy may help with autoimmune neutropenia. Acupuncture, as we've talked about, medical massage can really help with anxiety and depression and pain and also muscle spasticity or tension. Uh, aromatherapy, and I understand that Dr. Benella, who's not here uh, this session, is, has a passion for integrative medicine and uh, passion for aromatherapy. So I'm touching on some of her uh, passions, let's just say. I use them in my life daily. I wouldn't normally get up and talk about them, but I'm happy to do so. And um, actually uh, really see some delightful things, uh, both personally and in my practice um, in using aromatherapy. Of course, meditation uh, is so helpful for anxiety and pain and depression. And we all know that cycle that once you have pain, that you're more likely to become depressed. And so one of the things that I think is so important is staying out of that cycle or being aware of that cycle and moving out of that cycle of pain and depression or low energy. Um, exercise, as I've mentioned, can be very helpful, and it doesn't have to mean a 20K run or a 5K run. That sounds like a lot of fun. Sometimes I have the energy for it, and sometimes I just don't. And I say, if I can do a, a two-mile walk or a five-mile walk, then that's great. I used to have a three-hour yoga practice every day. That doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm happy to get 20 minutes on my yoga mat, and that's just good, too. So um, there are, are more and more classes of, that are called yin yoga. And yin yoga, I think, is great for neutropenic patients. Um, it's a design a practice of slow uh, moving postures and holding those postures for two to three minutes at a time. So it's a meditation and yoga at the same time. And we'll go back a second. And so this is a, 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 a kind of a funny slide, but I'm happy to share it with you. So these are a few of my favorite things that I've found to be effective over the years. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, that I really feel like I've spent the past 20 years before I had the good fortune of meeting Dr. Dale and Adriana of trying to find ways that I feel well uh, in, in, uh, in harmony and in, in my life. And I can say it here with a smile, but there are plenty of days um, that I have gone with, as I've said before, chronic infections and very difficult. And I've really had to struggle, much like many of you have or your children have had to do 
to uh, find really uh, viable tools that work. And most importantly, on the upper left-hand corner is my dog, Spencer. <laughs> um, Spencer is a whippet. He's a rescue whippet. He's eight years old. And uh, that has a scarf on his head. He actually has almost virtually no fur. <laughs> and I actually uh, rescue greyhounds and whippets. And uh, since I never ended up having children, I have a real passion for, for dogs as well. And so it kind of looks like a collie, not quite. <laughs> um, so Spencer gives me a lot of joy. And I think as a neutropenic patient, you have to, or any kind of patient, um, really find uh, that, what was used the term yesterday, the warm and fuzzy of things that really, that, that make you feel very uh, nourished on a deep level. My husband, who's a physician, is an ophthalmologist, and uh, this is not the, the best photo of me, but what it shows is when I wake up with like five bad mouth ulcers and nose ulcers and really, really tired, but you get, you get up and you seize the day. <laughs> and you are very grateful for those who you love in your life. And um, I just think having really uh, supportive network is important to you. So my husband's very supportive of me. Um, my three siblings are physicians and they've come to understand neutropenia and being very supportive. Um, and of course, being with the elements, being outside, uh, I like to practice yoga outside, so I encourage you all to be in nature, or be somewhere where you can get out um, and really connect, not only with others, but be outdoors. And this is one of my treatment rooms. I really like um, nurturing my patients. So I did my clinical internship in hospice, and there's nothing like working in hospice to give you perspective on your life and um, creating very warm, nurturing uh, experiences for my patients is important to me. So that's one of my treatment rooms. I have six treatment rooms. And um, really engaging with them really puts in perspective on your life. So that's the other thing. If you're not working, I encourage you to volunteer. Um, hospice is a great place to be, <laughs> to give, again, some perspective in your life. This is um, on the lower right-hand corner, one of my professors in acupuncture. Her name is Linda. And she has severe rheumatoid arthritis. Um, she has pretty deformed fingers and feet. And she was my mentor all through acupuncture school. Because I'm sure, like many of you, I, uh, due to chronic illnesses and infections, had to to come and go through school. And it, it took one person really reaching out to me and saying, you're going to get through this. You're going to be fine. You know, you're, go you're going to do this. And I want to encourage each of you as patients to find a mentor, create a mentor or find a mentor in what you're doing, if in your work, who, who respects and understands you. So she, um, you know, when you see her fingers, you can't even imagine that she could be able to place an acupuncture needle, but she manages to do so. And she's an amazing um, uh, practitioner. And of course, also Nupagen. Um, most importantly, uh, my life has changed considerably thanks to Dr. Dale and Adriana and Nupagen. Um, uh, my life was very, very different before starting Nupagen, so I can't speak highly enough about um, being on regular Nupagen, finding the lowest possible dose, but having the highest possible ANC and being as productive and living a quality of life um, that is very high. And then, of course, just moving into the next topic here of nutrition, um, taking uh, women's multivitamin, I think a prenatal is great for both men and women. That, this is not scientific data. This is logic. Um, so just a very good uh, prenatal uh, vitamin I think is great. And then I feel so much better when I take um, B12 complex, and uh, I've been trying to find more research and data on B12, and maybe there's more out there. <laughs> uh, but I have just done my own experiment, and this is, again, just speaking as a patient. This is not scientific in any way, but, but taking actually a double dose of B12 and a complex and feeling significant more energy. So I see Dr. Dale and, uh, <laughs> is it Dr. Boxer smiling? I don't know. Is there, is there more research to support B12? Yeah. It works if you're deficient. Yeah, it works. I like that. There you go. <laughs> and maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I just feel better with the B12. So let's shift the conversation now to nutrition and the uh, anti-inflammatory diet. Um, so Dr. Andrew Weil, as I said, is a Harvard-trained physician, and his focus right now really is um, training physicians on integrative medicine and the role of inflammatory markers in the general population diet and proposing uh, a different way that's not too radical of eating and living. So 
a diet that is low in saturated fat and enriched in polyunsaturated fatty acids may suppress autoimmune system reactions for all people. So I have found a gluten-free, cow dairy-free, uh, lower carb and good protein and fats may be a good diet approach. So uh, again, I just want to reiterate that consider trying a gluten-free diet and consider trying a cow dairy-free diet that um, the, there's a lot of data to support just the showing that, that uh, uh, goat's milk is so much easier to digest than cow's milk, uh, the protein structure. So of course, hydration is key. Um, the anti-inflammatory diet counteracts the chronic inflammation that is the root cause of many serious diseases that become more frequent after the age of 60. And so by enjoying an anti-inflammatory diet, we can decrease inflammation and possibly reduce bone pain and increase our longevity. So if you would like to learn more about the Dr. Weil uh, or anti-inflammatory diet, I encourage you to go online and that is in the handouts there. Um, and this is the anti-inflammatory uh, pyramid. Uh, to nutrition pyramid that really suggests uh, uh, a large portion of the foundation of your diet being, uh, you know, cooked vegetables. I will just add because we're neutropenic, we have to be very careful about raw vegetables. So cooked or well washed vegetables, fruits, and then supplements, um, good high quality supplements. Uh, of course, Dr. Weil himself, or in the anti-inflammatory diet, uh, supports the use of whole cracked grains, quinoa, uh, gluten-free pasta, a lot of legumes, and healthy fats, fish, seafood, whole soy products, and cooked Asian mushrooms. There's a bit of research that he can, uh, that he offers on his site about like shiitake mushrooms specifically and uh, their anti-inflammatory properties. And of course, other sources of protein, moving upward to herbs and spices, turmeric uh, is a great anti-inflammatory uh, spice, and then green tea instead of coffee. So how many people enjoy green tea? I know, uh, excellent, I wasn't expecting that. I like that, I like that. So uh, a lot of good research there on how that can help create more of an alkaline uh, environment in your body and help us. And of course, very, very small amounts of red wine and the healthy sweet of 80% cocoa and chocolate. So um, another approach to this is, uh, how many of you have seen or read the book Wheat Belly? Uh, Good, so we have a few people who are familiar with Dr. Davis's work. He's a cardiologist, and he's looking at the role of inflammation uh, from a cardiologist's perspective and how wheat specifically is affecting uh, uh, increasing inflammation in our system. And so uh, another approach to this from a cardiologist's perspective is reducing inflammation um, with this wheat belly lifestyle in which we reject all foods made with high yield semi-dwarf wheat the worst crop, as he says, ever created in a laboratory, to craft a lifestyle of ideal health. However, we also emulate all grains, and that's controversial for some people, um, because they say that there is now the way that grains are being manufactured have a similarity to wheat, so even the production of quinoa is, is uh, questionable. So I, I would like to encourage, of course, uh, being neutropenic, um, cooked vegetables first over raw, if possible, and um, a high protein diet. I don't know about anyone else, but I crave protein. And um, when your body is searching for more energy, you don't want to go towards sugar. You want to go towards easily digestible proteins like fish and salmon. And um, again, just in summary, uh, I thought it'd be helpful just to have a visual. I personally love salads, so I am very careful about how I wash my fruit and vegetables and also put cooked foods on my salad like quinoa and black bean. Um, so that may give you a few ideas. Probiotics, um, again, I'm speaking personally. I find probiotics to be very helpful. Um, a dairy-free version, um, vegetarian version. Um, and then B12, I find to be very helpful as a neutropenic. And then I've switched entirely from goat's milk, or pardon me, cow's milk to goat's milk and enjoy goat cheese, uh, goat milk, et cetera. And then a, a high potency, um, uh, multivitamin and fish oil, and of course, vitamin D. So those are what I would call your staples that I would consider from a nutrition component to neutropenia. There's probably a lot more that I could talk about, um, about nutrition, but I tried to really just summarize. So how many people in the room um, regularly take supplements? 
So if you're neutropenic and you're not taking supplements, I really encourage you to, to make that a part of your wellness plan and diary. Um, and also that it doesn't need to be expensive, that you can get a good quality uh, multivitamin, fish oil, probiotic at Costco. And make, because a lot of people, my patients say, well, I can't afford supplements. And so a lot of gluten free options are available through co at Costco and Trader Joe's, and then also uh, your supplements. So um, foods to enjoy and avoid, enjoying well cleaned and washed uh, fresh fruits and vegetables when you do or not at all. And as I've mentioned, uh, uh, goat dairy over cow dairy. And uh, I think it's so important to respect your body and what you choose to eat and drink, and it will thank you, as, as we've talked about. So really taking a different approach to how you respect what you put into your body. Um, avoid molded foods. Um, uh, a lot of cheeses with rinds. I would encourage you to avoid alcohol. Uh, this can increase inflammation. I think a glass of wine now and then is fine, or a beer. Um, and a lot of these topics we've, we've touched on. So again, now moving into aromatherapy, I, um, have, I use it in my practice. I can't say it's something that I uh, am, am a master at by any means, but I do find it effective for patients who come in uh, who are anxious and dealing with stress and dealing with sleep issues. Um, so the, there are many ways to use uh, aromatherapy and essential oils. And how I uh, like to break it down is you can use it uh, in the form of through inhalation, ingest, or not ingesting, pardon me, but inhaling a diffuser or placing drops of essential oils near the patient. This would be great for pediatric patients or young people who you may want to provide uh, and create a space of calm and warmth and having some of the essential oils around um, your child. Uh, another way is to actually mix uh, something like lavender oil into coconut oil and to be able to massage uh, the necks and shoulders, backs of your partner or child and to be able to be, uh, integrate them daily. So um, anxiety is, uh, certainly we talked about that last night with Shay, is certainly a component of dealing with a chronic illness. Um, orange oil is known to, wild orange oil is known to be very uh, helpful in reducing anxiety. And then also rose oil, uh, essential oil said to uh, enhance energy and reduce stress, stimulate circulation and sharpen memory and boost mood. And so I use this quite a bit in my practice of um, just placing it on my hands before I start to treat a patient. And it's just interesting to watch someone who's gone from tears or who's frustrated to instantly kind of calm. And so they're using actually uh, more and more uh, aromatherapy in hospitals, even um, in Sloan Memorial. Um, their acupuncture aromatherapy is part of their uh, integrative medicine protocol. And of course, uh, sleep. Who doesn't have problems falling to sleep? Um, all of us deal with that uh, at one time or another. And uh, lavender oil uh, can be very, very helpful and very calming in helping you fall asleep. So putting it near your pillow. So um, it, um, these are some uh, essential oils that you may want to have at home. Uh, peppermint, lavender, citrus, orange, and eucalyptus in your own kind of uh, wellness uh, cabinet, medicine cabinet, um, and may be very uh, helpful to you. I, in the wintertime, deal with chronic sinus infections, and so one of the first things I do, I get up in the morning and I have a diffuser, or if you don't have a diffuser, you can just drop a few drops of eucalyptus oil or peppermint oil uh, on the stovetop in water and just br helping breathe in the eucalyptus or putting it in the shower is something else I also do. Um, and then at work, I always have lemon or citrus or orange uh, being diffused into the environment. And the first things people walk, to, walk in the door and says, oh my gosh, it smells so good in here. I feel so good here. And so it's just interesting to watch that. Again, I'm not a person who, um, who is, a, is a specialist in this by any means, but these are just very practical day-to-day -day use of uh, the oils. So, in summary, I just wanted to have some studies, or mostly resources for you, not studies today, but um, uh, some great resources, of course, as, as Neutropenics is the, uh, the Neutropenia uh, website that we're all very familiar with. And then, oh, forgive me, uh, is the, uh, uh, the National Institute of Health has very helpful, uh, and very clear, precise information about acupuncture and acupuncture use in uh, the role of uh, daily use, treatments, different diseases. And then um, 
One take home point that I would love for you to leave today is to be able to uh, not only consider what your wellness attributes are in living with neutropenia after today, so making note of how you create wellness, um, but also encourage you to watch this BBC documentary on acupuncture that the NIH is actually in, looking at the use of acupuncture and pain. And um, there's a very interesting uh, documentary on uh, how acupuncture works with pain, and I think you all will really enjoy that. Of course, finding an acupuncturist through the NACOM site. Um, again, I will be happy uh, later to help you. Uh, if you give me your name or I can give you a card, you can email me and I will help find someone in your area for you. And then um, Dr. Wiles' resources through the program of integrative medicine at the University of Arizona um, has uh, excellent resources for patients and physicians. And then Find Me Gluten Free is an app and a web, uh, website. And then um, again, the anti-inflammatory diet is actually there if you'd like to print it out. And then some other websites with regards to um, other physicians that are looking at inflammatory roles in nutrition. And so um, I know that was exp extensive. I see some eyes closing and I think I'm the only one who had an hour today. So thanks for bearing uh, with me and all those details and um, being, uh, being uh, open and engaged. And um, if there's any other uh, questions, I certainly can answer those later at 3.30 today. I'll be offering ear seeds. Ear seeds would be great to even share with your children. So uh, I will not be doing acupuncture. That would require consent. <laughs> and uh, I will not be actually placing needles. I have needles so if you have questions, but mostly I'd be happy to share and give you ear seeds to take home with a little map on how for treating pain. So um, I wanna thank everyone again. I wanna thank the physicians and Lee and uh, um, hope you all enjoy lunch and we'll see you soon.